will discuss in detail about random variable a random variable I, as i mentioned that it would be a function and it is one kind of numeric quantification of outcome so outcome might be of any nature when but when you quantify that outcome every outcome of a sample space into a number and then that process that process or that function or that role we are calling it uh, random variable and then we will see that in the process of defining uh, a random variable as a function then uh, we have to look out to uh, what is the source of randomness in the random variable so that that one is very much essential to identify how it is coming because it is a function from uh, sample space to real number sample space generally we denote it by omega to real number so that is the quantification approach that we will see it here so coming to outline of today's lecture first i would like to give a recap of last lecture that beige rule we had already uh, discussed about beige rule and uh, we could not cover example part in last lecture so today we will cover a one example in order to find posterior probability of uh, an event given some partial information okay or given some information due to some partitioning approach what we will come to see that and uh, i had already says, uh, mentioned that if you are having two event a and b and you know probability of a you know prob you know probability from the prior information you are having idea of what is the probability of a now after that you come up with b someone had given information about b okay then question would come that uh, uh, what would be probability of a given b so this would be updated probability simply updated probability so how you can compute this uh, updated probability so it would be directly coming from um, conditional probability as probability of how much probability that a is happening in b divided by probability of happening of b further if you decompose joint probability of a into b then it will take the form of probability of a because prior happening of a you know that's why you are having idea of probability of a times probability of b given a okay divided by probability of b so this one is very much important in various problem like learning problem like control problem so in control problem if you try to why your why we are going for this beige kind of approach uh, it is giving uh, a very important role in, in finance so uh, most of my learning problem happen happens to be uh, uh, like uh, in finance problem and uh, most of control problem also happens to be like in finance problem what is the scenario there that in a learning problem generally at hand you are having data data set generally we are calling it so you can denote it like this way data set you are having n number of sample point or data points x i y i x i generally we are calling it to features or input or attribute there are various name y i we are calling it uh, label or response or there are very various name label response here i varies from one to one and so just uh, you are having n number of data set and you don't know from there uh, from where this data set is coming so simply this data set is what it is totally uh, here source of the data set is totally unknown to you here your job is that you have to infer from the given data set you have to infer about what would be the source 
so what would be the source that means from which distribution this data set might be generated so that's where you come up with a parameter of the source distribution that we denote it by theta and from there what you do you say that uh, uh, you define here here likelihood concept you are coming with likelihood concept because you are you know about uh, data uh, data is completely known to you and theta is unknown to you you will come up with estimate of theta so situation would come here that two things would be here here two probability thing you have to calculate here conditional probability one is uh, probability of data given theta that generally we say that likelihood here theta is unknown to us later we will see that it would be given to you uh, you know that it would be from the data you can come up with this and uh, by using this one your ultimate task would be that what is the probability of theta given data you have to, later you have to come up with this one you have to find this one how you can find this so how you can find this that would be uh, really interesting is how you can find this one so the, that you have to find it so relation it it would come like this way so you can utilize this way, like this way uh, so you have to come up with there there would be bayesian approach you will see that uh, uh, some prior distribution theta you would come here it is uh, that's way uh, what is happening that uh, you say that uh, theta may have some prior distri distribution like uniform distribution gaussian distribution whatever is and uh, this one is the likelihood function generally likelihood we, we say that it is likelihood directly coming from the data likelihood and divide by probability of t the probability of seeing data so generally this we are calling it evidence evidence so that is the scenario we will see it in later part when we will discuss uh, uh, that application of Bayes theorem in detail in parameter estimation in estimation okay so that time you will see a lot of application this way so you just uh, here uh, have to understand every bit of Bayes theorem in order to get better application of this theorem everywhere Bayes theorem will come whether it is a distribution whether it is a parameter estimation whatever things would be there everywhere Bayes theorem will come now next we will discuss in this lecture regarding random variable and it is really interesting from the several perspective as i mentioned that it is a quantification of outcome every outcome would be assigned to a real number that means we will only see a numeric approach of outcome outcome may be of any nature but the corresponding assignment would be always a real number that assignment and the process of assignment we say that uh, the real random variable is observing various real uh, real number so if your x uh, random variable is observing various real number uh, what is the distribution of that that distribution we will see it here how that uh, those uh, observed value are distributed so that kind of distribution we will talk okay and after that we will see that in the process of defining random variable how randomness is transformed from uh, sample space to random variable or uh, observable of the random variable how that transformation is happening that uh, how uh, so that source of randomness we will see it in the observable of random variable okay so coming to the first part of the lecture that base rule and in last lecture i had already discussed in detail i think i need to skip this and as i, I had already mentioned uh, mentioned that uh, like multiplication rule base rule is also another restatement of conditional probability and uh, from there we come up with this uh, kind of definition that probability of b given a uh, is just uh, uh, define as probability of b times probability of b a given b divided by probability of a so all these are very much uh, related cells uh, whichever you want to take first you can proceed with that here i have taken b first so simply what does it say that b is the prior probability and i want to update once we are having idea of event a so uh, initially we had b and uh, from there we calculated probability of b 
into and after that we calculate the property of a given b now we are having idea of a do we see any change in the probability of b due to the introduction of uh, a so that we will measure it so that's why the, this probability we are calling it posterior probability of a because prior we had not uh, uh, any information about a we had just information about b that's why we can come up with this thing okay and we, after that once we come across uh, come across about a then we try to update the probability of b that means uh, is there a, any change in probability of b or not so that probability we will see, we try to see so uh, generally we say that it is the association between a posterior and prior probability of an event okay so you can generalize this one it uh, with respect to partition so uh, you can come up with partition of a sample space and uh, when once you are coming with partition of a sample space that means you are having idea of what is the probability of bi is so that would be given to you because you come up with that idea and through that what is happening that if you are aware of what is the probability of bi is then suppose one event is happening after that uh, hypothesis introduction or hypothetical introduction of uh, partition then uh, event a is happening then that happening of a is affecting the probability of those bi is how much affecting how so, so that's why we are calculating that uh, uh, that update affect or that updated probability of bi is once a is happening so that we calculate it through Bayes theorem so simply here uh, you can say that it is from the definition of conditional probability and later we just uh, open up it uh, more explicitly and here we see that uh, in the numerator we observe probability, uh, probability of bi uh, given a it is defined as probability of bi times probability of a given bi divided by this total probability of event a okay so this is the scenario so it, you can see that uh, it is more informative here it is containing more number of information it is directly and give more perspective or insight view or more inference inferential view that we will see it here so uh, simply I, uh, I had given a very layman name to bi actually bi you can call it uh, these are the causes that leads to some conclusion and a we are calling it conclusion so you can say that once you are having idea of conclusion then you have to infer about uh, what <laughs> what kind of causes uh, might have led to that uh, conclusion uh, what what are the what are the role of causes what is the probability of causes that leads to conclusion okay so that we have to find find the, we have to once we are having idea of uh, conclusion so another sense that uh, someone came to know that there's some some one person is having cancer then definitely cancer uh, uh, mainly uh, various situation may leads to cancer so we have to find out what are those situation what are the probability of those situation that may lead toward cancer so that we have to infer about or that we have to investigate so Bayes theorem is playing very important role also in diagnosis process or medical investigation what we call it it is not limited to medical investigation it is uh, just uh, everywhere you can find wherever there is an inferential problem Bayes rule is coming so here i am taking one example that uh, we try to go discuss about medical diagnosis of a rare disease so suppose you are not feeling well today and you go to you go to your doctor the doctor fears your symptoms may be consistent with a serious disease after seeing all the symptoms doctor may be uh, what uh, he will he may say that uh, he may think over that uh, you may have cancer but uh, not sure okay not sure see in order to uh, verify it or uh, what uh, uh, doctor say the doctor send you to undergo a medical test unfortunately no medical test is always accurate even the best test may have a false positive or false negative and with rare probability false positive with rare probability false negative with rare probability so i i will discuss these things false positive false negative false positive simply it say that uh, it is giving false positive that means you are not having um, 
that particular disease but reading is giving that uh, positive positive reading that you are having a disease so that situation false negative that is simply false negative it is giving negative result despite of that you are having uh, that disease so simple these are simple meaning of the, that but having very interesting application like uh, you will see in hypothesis testing generally I, I, I will discuss in detail regarding this false positive false negative situation okay i have type 1 error type 2 error those things will come there so in the present case what uh, medical statistics saw that patients who have the disease who who have this disease test positive 95 percent so just focus on focus on if the patient is having disease then positive uh, the test would be positive test uh, would be positive uh, by how much by 95 percent okay of the time and up suppose the uh, patient is having not disease then again the test will be positive by two percent it is a, you can see that again it is a rare kind of situation so it is all about description regarding uh, one kind of testing process okay so in general population uh, if you further information is here so one information is this one another information is this one just um, all these are coming from the data so that's uh, in uh, if you try to look uh, information all these are information simply we are calling it uh, you can uh, just come out from the data uh, you can take out from the data so in general uh, <clears throat> general population one in thousand people in your group who have this disease one in thousand one by thousand simply that disease that is the property of disease being disease so property of d simply you can say that you can okay so a week after the test after a week or one week after the test your doctor calls you back with the result and the test came positive test for you for you the test came positive given this information now my question is what is the property that you actually have the fear disease that 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 we have to calculate it so let us calculate all these probabilities so we need to define event here first so uh, go, we have to go through systematically so we are calling a be the event that test come positive that simply a is the event of tested positive okay a is the tested positive and b is the event that you are having the disease so two events we have already defined now our modeling assumption says that 95 percent of of patient with disease tested positive what does it say that uh, <clears throat> 95 percent of patient with uh, this disease okay tested positive that means property of a given b is 0.95 that means if you are a patient uh, having that uh, disease particular particular disease then what is the probability of being tested positive that one is 0.95 so it is a conditional probability second information is saying that two percent of patient without disease tested positive without disease that means b is talking about having disease then b complement will talk about having no disease so that's where probability of a given b complement is two percent that means 0 0.02 and now third information is given to us that one in thousand people have the disease that means probability of b uh, equal to point uh, zero zero one so these th three information are given to us now let us deduce our uh, requirement what does it say so we want to at least compute the probability of, uh, of b given a that means you have the disease given that test come back positive okay so given that test come back positive then we have to calculate uh, what is the probability that you are having this disease so the, that means probability of b given a so how we can compute this probability so again we will apply here beige rule so this is the beige rule directly it is coming and we are having probability of b probability of a given b probability of a so everything we are having 
and so here uh, how you can directly say that how we are having probability of a probability of a we can calculate it through oh, total probability concept so total probability concept uh, you can apply it here so after simplifying this uh, ratio you come to see that probability uh, probability of ha having disease once you are tested positive is 0 0.045 that is about uh, 5 percent very rare chance it is very rare chance. so you don't have to afraid of that you despite of being tested positive now uh, uh, we'll discuss further things uh, regarding random variable today so uh, as i mentioned that random variable it is a uh, quantification process of outcome <coughs> and it is defined as a function from sample space to r so so in most random experiment we are interested in a measurement or numeric attribute of the outcome of the experiment rather than the original outcome we don't have to worry about what kind of nature outcome would have okay we just we have to give attention to uh, do we have any numeric association of the outcome or not so that we have to see that so a random variable simply we can define as a function that assign a measurement or numeric value to the outcome of experiment Me measurement or numeric value to the outcome of the experiment okay so mathematically we can say that a random variable it is a function defined from sample space to r remember that i am saying that here we are defining a random variable as a function from sample space to r that assign a real number x of omega to each omega omega a small omega a, that happens to be outcome each omega that have outcome in sample space capital omega of the experiment so this is the way so you can always remember that if i'm say asking uh, to define a random variable you have to look that whether every outcome of the sample space is engaged or not if it is not engaged you can't say that uh, that uh, a specific random function would be a random variable so a function which is defined like this way may or may not be a random variable unless the domain is complete sample space so we are defining an example suppose x we are we are performing uh, three toss of a coin so in three coin tosses we are defining a number x be the number of heads x we are defining a function x be the number of heads so in this case what are the possible value of x anyone would like to say that if you are tossing uh, three coins together then and we are defining here x as a number of heads then what are the possible value of x anyone yeah so x uh, we will get uh, zero number of heads uh, we may get zero number of head ahead we may get one number of head we may get two number of head and three number of head uh, like this so we can't get more than three number of heads so that is the so that's a, that's a that's a, what are the possible value of x that of x observe so x observe either zero or one or two or three so these are the observed value of x what we say that so we can say that in that process x uh, uh, define a mapping from sample space to r like this way uh, if you try to look original things that uh, how each member of the sample space is mapped to uh, a real number that numeric value so you can observe that here uh, here head 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 it has been mapped to three head head tail map to two head tail head map to two tail head head map to two head tail tail map map to one tail head tail map to one tail tail head map to one and tail 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 map to zero so this is the mapping process either you see in the tabular framework or you can go to see in venn diagram there is no issue so it depends on, so in venn diagram you can see like this way venn diagram is more general so that's why. so in venn diagram you just put all the element uh, so uh, all omega outcome head 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 
it is coming like this way then head tail head then head tail head then tail head head then <coughs> head tail tail then tail head head then tail tail head then tail 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 so usually you can say that this will be mapped to three head tail head this will map to two this will also map to two this will also map to two now non-word these three will map to one this will map to one this will map to one and tail tail will map to zero so this mapping also you can see that uh, through Venn diagram approach also. So this is the mapping process of uh, random variable from sample of space to x. Now if I am defining another uh, random another count number here, uh, x dash I am calling it num uh, here uh, I am calling it uh, okay here. Number of head is two. Simply, we say that uh, number of heads is at least two. Or at least one. At least one tell me what are the possible value of x dash if i am saying at least one what are the possible value of x dash anyone anyone one two and three so tell me is it a function from sample space to r is it a function x dash what is the domain of x dash? It is not come here. If you try to find domain of x dash, then it is not a not a sample of space. It is not completely separate. It is not containing one outcome. It is not equal to omega. So that's why if you are defining like this way, it is this x dash is not a random variable. Here you have to look into what is the uh, domain of the uh, corresponding association numeric function if it is complete sample space then we will say that it would be a random variable otherwise it would be not a random variable now i will take few more example here and uh, yeah. uh, question is coming like this way in the again question is related with uh, uh, three tosses of coin uh, okay so a player pays dollar 1.5 uh, the player pays dollar 1.5 to play the following game okay so a game is uh, a coin is tossed three times the number of heads is counted so the player receives one dollar if x equal to two and uh, otherwise player will receive Three scenes situation here. Player will receive dollar one if x equal to two, dollar eight if x equal to three, and otherwise if uh, x is other than two or three, then uh, that player will receive nothing. Okay, so that's it. Three scenario is coming here. So here we have to define another random variable that y happens to be the reward to the player okay why we are calling it reward to the player okay so by de default y it would be a function of the random variable x 
how because value of y it is it is derived from value of x and value of x is derived from the original outcome of the tossing a coin thrice so that indirectly we can say that here y is, it is a function of x and, and hence and x is a function of outcomes and hence we can say that y is a function of outcome through composition mapping composition approach uh, that composition of function approach what we say that uh, so here, uh, here easily we can say that uh, uh, along with x y is also a random variable and what are the possible value of y so possible value of y are here only three scenario we observe that player will receive dollar one if x equal to two player will receive dollar eight if x is equal to three otherwise player will receive nothing zero in that scenario so that that's the possible value of y are zero one two so these are the possible value observed value of y so that's where uh, <coughs> generally here omega denote uh, sample space and we know that a random variable it is a function from sample space to r then question would be there there that what is the range of x so omega x is actually we are calling it range of x it is a notation of range so it is collection of all the value of x omega such that omega is coming from the sample space capital omega so x suffix omega it is uh, denoting your range range of corresponding random variable so we can assign uh, each outcome to y how in this manner so uh, here we can easily see that uh, x equal to 3 is talking about to 3 heads and uh, here that map to 8 so that's why if you talk about what is the pre image of 8 y equal to 8 uh, pre image of 8 is actually this one this outcome in the sample space likewise uh, what is the pre image of 1 it is the 1 dollar when you are getting when x is taking value 2 and when x is taking value 2 when outcome is this one or when outcome is this one or when outcome is this one so that's where the corresponding pre images of x equal to 2 would be also pre images of uh, y equal to 1 so that's where you, you are getting so likewise you can see that here uh, what is the domain of y it is complete sample space of the three toss of this coin toss up so that's where y is in legitimate uh, random variable now here question next would be here then how to uh, if you're defining we can we had already seen that uh, anyhow we can always map a sample space to a real number so in both uh, both thing and here we generally in element a uh, arbitrary uh, arbitrary element in sample space we generally denote it to uh, denote it by omega and a small omega and it it is mapped to a real number x of omega generally we denote it like this way and further also through the composition mapping you can keep on defining uh, here this would map to some y uh, you can call it uh, give us a specific name or particular name so this x is mapped to uh, y you can call it y or simply you can say that under some function if function is not given then we can denote it like this way y equal to y of x and further if you look out through that compression mapping uh, it would be a what uh, x is what uh, x of omega and later you will see that it is also uh, pre image of y directly also coming from um, sample space so it is in legitimate random variable likewise you can keep on increasing this uh, process and uh, through that uh, you will see see that various random variable you can define it like this way now then if you are defining in this process then question is coming that uh, what is the source of randomness in the observed value of x so the randomness in the observed value of x is actually induced by the random experiment so probabilities of the observed value computed in term of probabilities of the underlying outcomes 
underlying outcomes okay so directly you can say that uh, when you are defining a random variable as a function from sample space to omega so here two things are here you can observe that so x equal to one if you are taking a small x it is one a specific observed value of the random variable x then uh, you can say that it is containing two terms one is x that one is the rule or function and another one is omega so x is here not uh, not a source of randomness the, uh, randomness is not coming due to x randomness is coming due to this outcome so you always have to see that what is the source of randomness it would be the outcome itself and that that one is coming from the sample space or random experiment so that's why you have to be very much a specific so we will see that here uh, in order to compute the probability of x that's where the because uh, uh, x is also random here it is random one observable of x if you are taking that one is random why because of the randomness of the outcome omega so probability of this x observing this x would be directly associated with probability of omega so how we can calculate probability of uh, one single uh, observed value that we will see it here through pre uh, inverse mapping approach so if a coin is tossed three times and uh, then what uh, we will get a sequence of heads and tail as outcome then the sample space would be this with eight member there would be okay uh, this would be the sample space of uh, coin when we toss three times so if uh, we are defining a random variable x as a number of heads in these three tosses then if you are taking a particular Observe value of x that x equal to 2 then how we can calculate probability of x equal to 2 so we can calculate probability of x equal to 2 how by looking back to pre images of x equal to 2 that means what are the uh, outcome of this experiment has map has been mapped to 2 so actually what are those those are head head tail head tail head tail tail head and we know that from uniform law of probability what is the probability of head head tail anyone it is 1 by 8 and probability of head tail head is also 1 by 8 probability of tail head head is also 1 by tail and all these are mutually exclusive because it happens to be outcome mutually exclusive okay so here simply probability of x equal to 2 it can be uh, calculated or computed by summing these individual probability that means sum 1 by 8 3 times and you are getting 3 by 8 so probability of observing x equal to 2 is 3 by 8 it is coming due to probability of the underlying outcomes so th those outcomes which i defined this one so through this way we try to calculate probability of the observed value of x one observed value of x likewise in the same like same scenario if you are willing to calculate probability of y now how we can compute probability of one observed value of y okay so we will compute probability suppose we are taking for uh, we willing to compute probability of that y is observing value 8 so how we come can compute so we have to compute probability of y equal to 8 uh, through the out probability of outcome which is associated with 8 so when we are getting 8 when x is equal to x is equal to 3 so pre image of x uh, y equal to 8 is x equal to 3 and what is the pre image of x equal to 3 it is omega uh, the outcome omega having three head 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 so that's way uh, here two indirect approach is coming so that's the probability of y equal to 8 is equal to probability of head 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 and pro head 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 is one outcome uh, one possible outcome out of the eight outcome and to, to equally likely we know that probability of head 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 is one by eight so that's the probability of y equal to eight is equal to one by eight so that's the, through that here directly we try to calculate probability of uh, uh, an observed value of y via what we call it uh, that uh, probability of outcome 
okay do we have time further so other thing we will discuss in next class and uh,